there are millions, tens of millions of Americans every day, every year, who don't have access to the oral health care that they need. When you look at somebody, you talk to somebody, the first thing you look at is their teeth. It's a natural thing to smile. And when you don't have your teeth, you don't smile. We don't have anyone to go to typically because we don't have dental insurance. We had a three-year-old yesterday actually who walked two miles to come to our office because the mom could not find transportation. The only real solution for addressing this phenomenal unmet need is systemic change. Today we're at Grafton County Nursing Home and we're providing dental preventive services to the residents as well as basic restorative um, dental extractions. Our elderly population in general is at a higher risk for disease compared to the general population. They just can't physically reach back to floss those back teeth or even brushing can be difficult for them. I see patients every day that haven't been to the dentist in 30, 40 years. Our clinic opens up a big window for them to be able to finally be able to go to the dentist. I think my whole jaw has got infected. It's numb. I know I shouldn't be, even in fact, be eating, but I just eat enough to, oh, to get through. When you went to school, you had a dentist appointment uh, once a year or something like that? And in my case, they, when I was 12 years old, they pulled my four front teeth out. So going to school was no fun for me. My days in high school, no front teeth, no activity, no girlfriends, no nothing. <clears throat> Dulzville. When I retired and my husband died and my kids were scattered, I did not have any insurance. And I was having problems with my teeth, and yet I really couldn't afford to go to another dentist unless I asked my children for help. And I hated doing that. If you have to live with chronic infection, even your diet is changed and affected. I think that must be just as bad as if you got a lesion. We need to recognize that poor oral health can be directly related to poor overall systemic health and creating higher risk for respiratory infections, heart attack, stroke, and an uncontrolled diabetic status. The reason we're here today is we're seeing a couple of patients who don't have current access to care. I don't like to turn anybody away for the sake of money. Good to see you. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. Good, Good to, to see you, Dr. All right, so you know what we're doing today? I'm a single father, and I am self-employed. I own a home improvement business. Two teeth have got to go. I am on the Medicaid for adults, and my health insurance, I'm fully covered, prescriptions, doctor's visits, but when it comes to dental, it's emergency extractions only. Okay. Did you have any questions before we started? Quite often, adults wind up in hospital emergency rooms because they're in extreme dental pain. They're experiencing dental abscesses. Their faces are swollen, there's pus, there's pain, the whole nine yards. But when they go to a hospital emergency room, there's typically not a dental provider there. And the hospital emergency room staff can do nothing about their underlying dental disease. 
emergency room care is just about the most expensive form of care that exists in this country. I don't end up into the emergency room until the pain medication, Tylenol, Motrin, is no longer working. And they, they were very honest. You can have the tooth extracted for X amount of dollars. You could also have a root canal done for considerably higher. You do anything you can to not have a tooth pulled. But when you're also raising a family, it seemed like a no-brainer to have the tooth pulled. And that's the way it's gone. I had a cavity on my wisdom tooth, and the cavity had gotten to the nerve, and it literally, any if I would open my mouth to breathe, it would, like, like cripple me because of how bad the pain was to be sedated. The x-rays to have the tooth pulled was well over $1,500. I can't afford dental insurance, so what do I do? This challenge of access to dental care is a problem that has its roots in how the two professions, the medical profession and the dental profession, evolved. Medicine has always been a more highly esteemed profession, and dentists' initial focus was primarily on extractions. Fortunately, dentistry has evolved, but that division still exists, and that has borne itself out in how health insurance and payment systems have evolved in this country as well. We as a team decided to start providing free dental care to our veterans in need. How have you been? Good, and you? I am a veteran. I served for six years. I feel so grateful to be able to give a little bit back and honor people who've given so much. When I got out of the Army, I didn't know it at the time, but I had PTSD and it took me almost 10 years to finally accepted. And during that time, I didn't really take care of my teeth like I should have been, because I had other things in my mind. And of course, I didn't have uh, dental insurance to take care of it. Let's take a look. Oh, nice. We found a lot of these veterans with terrible gum problems, gum disease. Many had abscessed teeth, okay. teeth that needed to be removed, tooth pain gum infection. They weren't confident to go back out into the workforce because they're missing teeth. There are a number of studies that document the loss of, for example, school days for children due to oral health problems. Working age adults, they miss time from work due to oral health pain. That has an impact not just on them as individuals, but it also has an impact on our society, on the economy. We often see a lot of patients who come in having been referred from their pediatrician. More often than not, we're seeing these children later than we should. And at that point, the decay is already present into an extreme amount. We recently had a three-year-old present to our office. Uh, the parents had stated she was in extreme amounts of pain. All of the 10 teeth in her upper jaw have extensive amounts of decay down to the gum. And not only will that affect what she can eat, it'll affect her ov overall appearance. She won't smile. She won't know how to express herself. Her speech will be affected. It puts you in a different class. It puts you in a closet. You have a lot of empty spaces, not only empty spaces with no teeth, but empty spaces of things that you ought to be able to do. There's a lot of heroic work going on within the dental community. It's a drop in the bucket compared to what the extent of the need truly is. 
as a country, we are never going to volunteer our way out of this crisis. What is going to have to occur is systemic change. I think it'd be helpful to add a more comprehensive dental benefit to both Medicaid and Medicare. We need more dentists. We need more hygienists. Maybe we need to put more responsibility on our partners, the hygienists. Maybe the ability to diagnose some of these problems or, or act more independently might be beneficial to some of these communities at greater need. My greatest goal as a public health dental hygienist is to incorporate dental into medical and medical into dental. Both the challenge and the opportunity is for people from all walks of life to get involved in improving access to oral health care and thus improved overall health for everyone in our country. <laughs>